I wish you guys knew more about how much that I've believed in the Atlanta Hawks over the past couple of years. This is a team that I've wanted to be good so bad that you probably would have thought that they were my favorite if I talked about them more. I loved every second of Trey Young being the villain against NY a few years ago. He had Knicks fans so tight that they were doing things like this. Go New York, go New York, go! will be back! It's Trey Young Valley! Trey Young's born! Trey Young's born! I really don't think that there's one player that has had me that down bad as a fan. Trey Young was probably at his glorious crib, watching these videos on his phone, laughing like there's no tomorrow, just thinking about what he was going to do to them the following game. Look, I know that being a fan is fun, I quite literally am one, but as a fan I can also recognize that I probably shouldn't be giving extra motivation to star players that really don't need it. These guys are playing on the highest level for a reason. The last thing you want to do is give them that extra edge. This season, the Hawks would make it all the way to the conference finals before falling to the Milwaukee Bucks, the eventual NBA champs. Though I knew that the Hawks had overachieved that season, there was no shot that I thought that they would be in the play in the following year, getting bounced by Miami in the first round. While overachieving is great, it unfortunately comes with its own set of problems, and while I still believe in Atlanta, it's been hard to ignore the trouble in paradise. The holidays are here and Prize Picks is making sure that everybody knows with their very generous 12 days of Pickmas promo. Guys, my fiance does not even follow hoops, but yet she loves Pickmas. That should tell you how good that this promo really is. Thanks to Pickmas, I was able to play this risk-free lineup which won me $45 yesterday. The beauty of this all is that I would have gotten everything back had I lost. With Prize Picks, you don't have to risk much to win big. From December 14th to Christmas Day, the promos will keep getting better. So if you were on the edge about signing up, now is definitely the time. Today I'm taking advantage of the boosted payouts with this $5 lineup just to make sure that I don't miss out on anything. You can play on your web browser or download the Prize Picks app by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure you use code COOP to get your deposit instantly matched. Check prizepicks.com forward slash Nightly to see each promo unwrapped at midnight eastern time. When the dust settled around the DeJounte Murray trade, I loved the price relative to what other players were going for. Now like anybody, I wondered how the fit would work. While you can say what you want about the fit, I'd say that so far this season the trade has produced some exciting basketball. This season, DeJounte Murray is averaging 20.8 points, 5.4 rebounds, and 6.2 assists. And well, let's just say some of that showmanship that was suppressed in San Antonio is back. I knew moments like this would be coming, I just thought that there would be a lot more scenarios where they would finish off the job. You see, the Atlanta Hawks, they went on to lose this game in what I would call a very sad fashion. The thing is, not only did the Rockets win this game, but they also returned the energy that the Hawks gave them after it, waving goodbye at the end while Trey Young tried to find the nearest exit. Wait, it actually gets worse. This would be posted to social media. In the humbling words of Luka Doncic, Everybody acts tough when they're up. As of late, the Atlanta Hawks have struggled and it hasn't been pretty. It's hard to discount the injury to DeJounte and their injury issues altogether, but if you ask me, what these injuries have done is they highlight their lack of depth or better yet, the faults of Nate McMillan and the overall mess that has been transpiring in Atlanta this season. Here's the hoping that the Hawks owner momentarily avoiding the luxury tax was worth it. To quote The Athletic, even after trading Herter, the Atlanta Hawks are still sweating out every Murray three-pointer and Clint Capella free throw because of the incentives in their contracts that could put them over the tax. According to The Athletic, the Hawks are doing things like holding on to unwanted contracts because signing somebody else would simply put them closer to the tax if not over it. If you're a franchise player, how are you supposed to feel about this and what message does it send to you? Making win now moves while actively hurting yourself in order to avoid the tax is like wanting cereal, pouring yourself some milk, and then giving the cereal away before you even get the chance to put it in your bowl. If you want cereal, that's just probably not the smartest thing to do at that moment. December 2nd, Trey Young would miss a game against the Nuggets with what was deemed as right shoulder soreness. According to reports, there would be much more to this story, as apparently Young and McMillan had a heated exchange during Friday's shoot-around. This exchange would reportedly lead to Trey Young choosing not to play against the Denver Nuggets. 
According to this, Young wanted to prioritize his treatment. With that, he would ask to not join shoot around and then later on decide if he could play against the Nuggets. McMillan wouldn't like that, and when Trey would go on to miss shoot around, the head coach would give Trey two options play off of the bench or not play at all. And let's just say that Trey wasn't really feeling either of those options, according to reports. After this whole debacle, Trey would have this really awkward, intense press conference. They really didn't need to be awkward and tense. Well, what's public was that you not at the game. So why weren't you there? Man, it's not you. Uh, it's not you at me, bro. Uh, I'm curious. I mean, you're leader of this team. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard for people who don't know the full situation to, to understand it. So, I mean, it's like I said, it's a private matter again. and It made public, which is unfortunate. Um, and if it was stayed private, it probably wouldn't have been as big of a deal. But uh, like I said, it's unfortunate. My, my job and my goal is to, to win a championship, and that's all I focus on. But you can see the perception, though, Trey. You are a leader of this team, and when you're not there to yeah, support your you, guys. When you're, when you're an outside guy like you are, and you don't understand in a private matter, in a private situation, uh, you should probably stay on the outside. And like I said, it's unfortunate that everybody has to understand and, and know a little bit of the details that went on inside. But, um, I mean, inside here, we're all good. And, uh, I mean, if you got any more questions about that, then you can you can talk to somebody else about it. That's all I got to say about it. Again, I respect what you're saying about the, the, the private of, of, of the locker room, the private of, of the practice core. We're not here. I guess it's just a public thing of you not going to support your teammates when you're healthy about not going on the bench. So where's the disconnect there? If I was healthy, I would have been playing. But, I mean, John was in a boot, and he was still at the game. Yeah, but you don't know the full story. Again. You wanna... Again. No, I don't want to. So that's just, there's more to it if you're being healthy. Just, I mean, a private matter needs to stay private. According to Shams, this whole issue would be a microcosm of the tension that exists between young McMillan and the entire locker room. To quote this article, the Hawks have held multiple team meetings early this season to resolve various conflicts. We're not even at the midway point of the season, and the Atlanta Hawks are going through it. For me, it's really hard to overstate the Hawks' struggles as they're abundantly obvious. Against the Orlando Magic December 14th, my jaw would hit the floor as the Atlanta Hawks would allow 50 points in the first quarter. This is a game that I was actually watching because I have Bull Bull and Bancaro in fantasy. When I noticed the score, I wiped my eyes like five times to make sure that it was not halftime. This game, Trey would dish out 16 assists and score 19 points while going 6 of 15 and being a team worse, minus 17. If it wasn't for Hunter catching fire when he did, this game could have been a whole lot uglier. You see, for the Atlanta Hawks, one of the biggest pieces to their puzzle is Trey Young playing at a high level that not many can replicate. You don't go out and make this colossal win now move like acquiring DeJounte Murray if you don't believe that Trey Young is that guy. While Trey Young hasn't been bad by the standards of the NBA or anything like that, he's been bad by his own standards and that's enough for the Atlanta Hawks to struggle, especially when they are as hurt as they currently are. Through five games in December, Trey Young is shooting 19.4% from deep, making you wonder how much that shoulder is really bothering him. Trey Young is somebody that pulls from the logo with ease, and yet he's only shooting 28.5% from beyond the arc on the season. As a matter of fact, he's shooting career lows across the board, shooting 40.8% from the field also. Now, mind you that as I say this, Trey Young is still averaging 27 points, 3 rebounds, and 10 assists. Even with the major decline in efficiency, those aren't bad numbers by any means. But as we all know, the game of basketball is much deeper than statistical output. In my opinion, I think Trey gets going sooner as opposed to later. And I think that a lot of the Hawks' problems are fixable. They just need to get healthy in the worst way. Healthy talent helps to cover up bad coaching. In the meantime, let's appreciate the growth of Jalen Johnson and AJ Griffin as these two continue to show big game upside. Guys, I'm a big fan of Jalen Johnson. This guy is a terror in the open court. He can play make, he can create, he's a good defender, and he's a springy athlete. He's a guy that at like 6'8", 6'9", has a lot of tools that you can work with. He's an extremely versatile guy. 
Now, with all that being said, here's the hoping that this team figures something out with John Collins. Relatively speaking, the numbers are ugly. The fit does not feel right. This is somebody that I thought would have been gone a while ago. Hawks fans, here's the hoping that Trey gets it together and that body language improves. Guys, let me know what you think of everything down in the comments below. Clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support my channel. I'm Gilly Coop bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload.